All right, it's nice and cozy and warm in here, isn't it? Thank God for the rain, and thank God for a warm place to gather. So let's, uh, let's focus our, our minds and our hearts on the presence of the Lord. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you again for the rain, for, for refreshing all living things, including us. And we ask, Lord, that we would be able to set aside whatever distracts us, that we would be able to focus on the presence of your spirit here, that we would be open to what you have to teach us, and that we would be transformed by your spirit to be more like your son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. be seated. We have some announcements. Oh, uh, these you'll see over there uh, in the foyer. Some people tell me it's the narthex, but we don't have to worry about those fancy church words. Uh, it's all about a Christmas Eve service uh, at, at 5 p.m. And also uh, on Sunday, the flip side, the 17th, we're having a sing-along uh, What's it, 15 years? How long, how long has this been going on? 15 years. And that's a community-wide event. We've got special music, uh, special dancers. Uh, the whole thing is, is uh, uh, something that people look forward to all over. So please b feel free to pick up some of these and invite some of your friends or people uh, uh, you know from wherever. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, the congregational meeting today is, me is immediately after worship. It's going to be quick. It's officers that are already lined up, and we're going to just uh, close the deal. So you don't have much time left, or, or you're in. <laughs> and, uh, and then the visitor cards, uh, if, if, as you, if these are right in front of you, it should be. The visitor cards and also prayer cards. So uh, we know that there are prayer concerns among us. And so please fill those out. They'll be collected, and uh, we have, we'll be praying over them all, all during the course of the week. And also, uh, contact information for those of you who uh, can share that. So we, don't want, we can send you emails. We can send you information about what's going on in the life of the church so you don't miss any of the good stuff coming up. Okay, and uh, I talked about the sing-along, Christmas Eve services. Tree is going to go up after the congregational meeting. So if um, some of us can stay and help with that, that would be Right. Good. And I like, I like, I'm really uh, glad. Yes, Jerry. One more announcement. Short meeting next Sunday at the end of service is for ushers and anybody that has an interest in usher. We're just going to be short a couple hundred and seven years. Next Sunday after the So if you, if you can count, if you can greet people, if you can hand out pieces of paper, you might be called to be one of the ushers coming up, right? And I, have, I, was, I, can't, I can't believe that we have brand new speakers hanging from our sanctuary. And now people even on the east side can hear us. Yes, Molly. Right, that's a good time, and uh, let's, yes. <laughs> we got lots of announcements today. Go, Shelly.
And tell her, did you have a good time last time? It was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, there's a lot of opportunities there. So I think that's all the announcements. We're, by the way, we're still uh, in process here. That's why, don't look behind that curtain, because that's... <laughs> <laughs> That's a scissor lift that gets people way up high, and uh, you don't even see that. Uh, We're building the manger. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, uh, I think it's time for Mark to come up. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. If you could all please rise and join me for the call to worship. This morning, this is from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 through 5. A voice is wailing. In the wilderness, get it ready, prepare the way, make it straight, make it a straight shot. The eternal would have it so. Strengthen the way in the wandering desert to make the crooked road wide and straight for God. Where there are steep valleys, treacherous descents, raise the highway, lift it up, bring down the dizzying heights, fill in the potholes and guide the rough places. Iron out the shoulders, flat and wide. The Lord will be, really be, among us. The radiant glory of the Lord will be revealed. All flesh together will take it in, believe it. None other than God, the Eternal, has spoken. Hope, <laughs> the first Sunday of Advent. The scripture is from Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 3 through 5. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Today, today is the first, can, this is the first candle of Advent, and today we light the candle of expectation and hope. We light the candle of expectation and hope. May it remind each and every one of us of God's great promise to us. He is our hope. He is our redeemer. He is our savior. Will you please join me in prayer? Father, during this Advent season, may we be reminded of your promises to us and your fulfillment of them. Help us to prepare our lives for his advent within us. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
as grown-ups can remain seated. But Viviana's going to take the kids to Sunday school right now. And you're going to come back like at quarter till for communion today. So be ready. Thanks. Let's pray together. Lord, we do long for you. We do thank you for your presence here, for the gift of your spirit, for your uh, unceasing grace towards us. And we know we need it. We've slipped off the path. We've been self-absorbed. We've been sinful. We've missed the mark. Uh, we failed to say and do what you want. And we've done and said things that grieve your spirit. We're aware, Lord. And so we come to you and confess in silence all the ways that we have failed you. We could go on, Lord, but you know the rest. We thank you that we can come to you as many times as we need to receive your embrace of mercy and forgiveness. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Is there any other God like you who forgives evil and passes over the transgressions done by yours who remain? He does not hold on to his anger forever because he delights in showing love and kindness. He will take pity on us again, will tread our wrongdoing underfoot. He will cast all our sins down to the bottom of the sea. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Resurrected heart. Oh, come on and rise up. Take a breath, you're alive now. Can't 
today. On this first Sunday of Advent, please fill our hearts with your spirit. Let us know that you are the light of the world, that you have come among us as a man. You bore our sins on the cross so that we can be with you in heaven. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen.
scripture reading comes from Thess, chapter 4, verses 13 through 14, and chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, we want you to be fully informed about those who have fallen asleep in death so that you will not be overwhelmed with the grief like those who have lived outside the true hope. Hope is what we believe. Since Jesus died and rose again in the same way, God will bring Jesus all who have died through him. Now, brothers and sisters, you don't need further instruction from us or anyone else, for that matter, regarding how the, the seasons and times will play out. That's because you know the truth well enough. The day of the Lord will race unto the scene and surprise us like a thief in the night. People will be going about their business chanting, all is well, all is at peace. And in the next moment, 
ruin, and destruction will suddenly seize them as labor pains grip a woman about to give birth. For them, there will be no escape. My brothers and sisters, it will be different for you. You do not dwell in the darkness so that the day will not surprise you like a thief. For you, not, you are not, for you are all children of the light. You are sons and daughters of the day. We are not created of the night, nor are we owned by darkness. So then, let's not give in to sleep or wander around in a stupor as some do, but let's stay awake and in control. You see, sleepers sleep through the night and drunkards drink the night away. But since we belong to the day, we should stay sober and in control, covered with a breastplate of faith and love and a helmet of hope of salvation. For God has not destined us, he has chosen us to face his wrath, but to be the heirs of salvation through our Lord Jesus, the anointed, the liberated king who died for us. So regardless of whether we are awake or asleep, we will live together with him. So support one another, keep building each other up as you have been doing. Let's pray together. Lord God, we thank you for your word. We thank you uh, for your guidance in life. And we ask, Lord, that uh, you would open our hearts to what you have for each one of us. And you would open our hearts collectively for us as a fellowship. We might be able to hear and be transformed by what you have for us. And that how we will live will be different because of what happens here. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a season uh, of Advent, which means a season of, of yearning, of, of hope, of expectation, of especially, if, by definition, the things that we have not yet experienced, at least not in full. And so... Uh, in, in this season where we, uh, especially this Sunday, where we, we, we're focusing on hope, uh, it reminds me, uh, and you may have heard this before, of the times when we were most desperately in need of hope. I can remember uh, being uh, let go. Everyone in the office let go, laid off, and, uh, and being desperate, having a, a toddler and, and, and hustling, painting jobs. Five houses in a row I painted by myself. Living in the East Bay in El Cerrito. And, and friends had, had got me work. And one friend, I was, I was on the floor in his kitchen. And I was, I was putting together the baseboards. And you know what it's like when you've been in a dark place. And, and sometimes you, you, for, you forget to breathe. You have a panic attack. And you can't, you can't get, get the oxygen in because the stress is so great. And because your despair is so great. And I remember being there on my knees in that kitchen floor. And having the, the darkness and the despair roll over me and I'm sure many of you have had experiences of darkness like that last week I talked about my friend Ken and I had permission to say his name he he was stuck he was paralyzed after decades of absorbing stress and multi-million dollar projects for the Department of Transportation fault lines in a troubled marriage uh, absorbing all this stress year after year after year finally he shut down. He couldn't face the prospect of going to work. It was terrifying. Completely shut down. Nervous breakdown. Unable to face the day. Because darkness had grabbed his soul. And it feels like it will never get better. And one of you uh, texted me this week uh, uh, about a, 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 lovely, a loved family that she knows well and there was a gun-related death, a teenager. And since 2015, uh, gun-related deaths have been up over 13.5% from the previous 15 years. It's an epidemic of violence, and, and, and it's gun deaths, mostly suicides, of teenagers. Why? Because of the darkness, of despair. 
Because sometimes we can't imagine the darkness being relieved that things could possibly get better. So we need to be aware of the darkness in us and all around us. And that's what makes today's message significant. Last week, faithful who have died will rise first, he goes on to say, and join those believers still living, and we will be with the Lord forever. At the end of uh, verse 18 of chapter 4, and then in the beginning of, of chapter 5. Now, brothers and sisters, and note the family reference. Brothers and sisters. You don't need further instruction from us or anyone else for that matter regarding how the seasons and times will play out. That's because you know the truth well enough. The day of the Lord and uh, the day of the Lord is, is kind of biblical code for when Jesus comes again. For the second coming of Christ. And from our perspective, the day of the Lord, when God sets all things right and justice will prevail and there will be no more tears, there will be no more suffering, suffering. And the kingdom of God will be revealed completely. The day of the Lord will race onto the scene and surprise. And they, I, they mistranslated this. We are not us. I strike struck out because it, it says literally the day of the Lord will come. Like a thief in the night. And that's generally in reference. Because it won't be a surprise for us. We'll learn about that in a minute. People will be going about the business. Chanting all is well. All is safe. Certain. Stable. Secure. All is at peace. And in the next moment. Ruin and destruction will suddenly seize them. As labor pains or anguish. Grip a woman about to give birth. And uh, I'm glad I don't know personally that experience, ladies. But you know what he's talking about, don't you? For them, there will be no escape. My brothers and sisters, it will be different for you. You do not dwell in the darkness, so that day will not surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light. Remember what we just heard from Isaiah. And the light will break forth. You are sons and daughters of the day. We're not created of night, nor are we owned by darkness. So then let's not give in to sleep or wander around in a stupor as some do. But let's stay awake and in control. And that word for control is uh, alert, watchful, attentive, vigilant. You see, sleepers sleep through the night and drunkards drink the night away. Not, that not much has changed, has it? But since we belong to the day, we should stay sober. And when I think of sober, I think of grim, unsmiling, you know, there shall be no laughter, no joy. <laughs> but then I looked it up. And sober means calm, collected in spirit, temperate, centered. Covered with a breastplate of faith and love and a helmet of the hope of salvation. And that helmet is often a metaphor for what protects our soul. The hope of salvation. For God has not destined us as chosen to face his wrath, but to be the heirs of salvation. Through our Lord Jesus, the anointed, the liberating king who died for us. So regardless of whether we are awake or asleep, we will live together with him. So, support, which means comfort, encourage, console. The word is, is the same root as paraclete. And that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit, isn't it? The one who comforts, consoles, strengthens us makes Jesus present. And we have that same ministry for one another. So support, comfort, encourage, console one another. Keep building each other up. And the image is to rebuild, to restore, to make strong and bold. Build each other up as you have been doing. So the first word I have for us is basis. What is the basis of our hope we have hope because jesus came to us 
because Jesus lived and died and rose again. And we who trust in him will do so as well. It's not wishful thinking. It's based on what has happened in human history. We have a basis for our hope, and that is Jesus. And Paul goes on to say in Romans chapter 5 that not only do we have the evidence of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. uh, Why do we hope, he says in Romans 5, because the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit given to us. And so we do not have to despair because the Holy Spirit is a deposit guaranteeing full payment when Jesus comes again and the kingdom comes is come fully. And so we have a basis for our hope. The second thing that we have is a a focus of our hope, an object of our hope. And it ain't a little hope. Let me just say that some of us just get by with the little things like, Hail Mary, full of grace. Please give me a parking place. (laughs) I heard that this week from a friend of mine. (laughs) Give me a parking place. Oh, one just opened up. Never mind. Or we might hope for a a, a better job or or being able to pay the bills or to recover from illness or to meet someone special or to restore broken relationships. There's a lot of good hopes that are worthy. But are they big enough? What is the hope? What is the focus of our hope? It's the resurrection life with Jesus in the fully completed kingdom of God. That's a big hope. It's not just for me and mine. It's not just my, for my friends and family, like my, 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 my cell phone account. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's something bigger. It's, it's, it's something that uh, we work towards here and now, but also spreads across the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his son, so that all who believe him will not perish but have everlasting life. And across the world in a place called Thessalonica, Paul is writing these folks in Macedonia, which was the center for the whole worldwide Greek culture from since Alexander the Great. And he's writing this little church on the coast in Macedonia, far from Jerusalem. And he's saying, you have that hope, too, that encompasses all the world. Uh, We would wish that no one is surprised or have sudden anguish like the pangs of childbirth when Jesus comes. That no one is destroyed when the day of the Lord uh, comes. But because God did so love the world. And that's why Paul has gone across the world and suffered all these these journeys. And these beatings and these whippings and these stonings. Because the love of Christ compels him. And so... Jesus is the basis for our hope, and Jesus is the focus of our hope. But what is the path to reach to get there? He, he, he lets us know. He lets us know. We wear the breastplate of faith, of trust, and of love. A Jesus kind of love. Agape kind of love. A love uh, as I have loved you kind of love. So be alert. That's how we stay on the path of hope. Be alert. Be awake. Be sober. Be calm. Collected. Centered. Unshakable. No matter how dark it gets. I think of Annie Dufresne once again in the Shawshank Redemption. He plays. He, he locks the, 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 head, the uh, warden's office. And he plays this beautiful music for the whole prison camp to hear. And all of a sudden, there's this, this, this little tiny moment of beauty in their horrible lives. And the music wafts out, and Andy is smiling. And they break down the door, and they throw him, they throw him in uh, isolation in the darkness. And he comes out after many, many days. Uh, and, and they said, well, uh, how did you survive all those days in the hole? And he said, I had my music. And they said... Well, uh, the records were in the office. You had no music with you. I had it here. And in, in a similar way, we have a calm, collected, 
uh, centered way of living, no matter how dark it gets, because we have the protection of our soul, our hope in the resurrection. I hope to see Jesus someday. It's, it's an active hope. It's not sleepy stupor. It's being alert. It's being people of the day. It's chipping away day by day, night by night to extend that kingdom of salvation, the kingdom of God for ourselves and for those around us. What is the path like? It has faith. It has love. It has uh, uh, calm and collected and centeredness, but also it's communal. Comfort, encourage, console one another with this hope. Our hope, like our faith and our love, fluctuate. They ebb and flow. They really do. You know it. I know it. Some days, uh, I hope Jesus is, is real. And some days, I'm overflowing with confidence. And so, what do we do? The tide is out for me. It's not for you. I need you to help me hold on. No matter how dark the circumstances, circumstances get, hope, as Red as, as we learned, is infectious. It's a matter of life and death. That we look around and we're supported and built up in community. That we're helped by each other's faith and love and hope to bring me out of darkness. And that's what happened to me and my friend Ken. And that's what will help all of us. We are people of the light who reflect the one who is coming again. We share our hope our comfort and strength and build one another up, especially in our broken places, whether we're believers or not, especially those people around us who uh, are in a place of life and death, who might be contemplating suicide, who desperately need the hope we can share. Don't you know we have something more precious than anything in all the world? That hope in the one who loved us, who gave himself, and who rose for us. Always be ready to share the reason for the hope within you. We are admonished. I hope I can love and serve those around me. As Jesus has called me. I hope to be used by Jesus to share his love. To extend his justice and grace, his kingdom with whatever time I have left in this life, whether it be a day or another 50 years. I hope Jesus smile at the end of my journey on that sparkling shore is as warm and brilliant as it has been in my dreams. And we will all be together forever. I hope. And this table, this table is what will sustain us on that journey. That journey, every valley will be made low. And every, every valley will be filled in. Every mountain will be made low. And the path of the Lord, what is the path? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way. So even the path, even the path of hope is Jesus. And how do we live on that path? We're sustained. We're sustained by his life. We're sustained uh, by his sacrifice so that we might have his life coursing through our veins. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he, took, he gave thanks, and after giving thanks, he took bread said, this is my body which is given for you. Eat this. Be sustained by this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This is my life and my love given for you. Receive it. Depend on it. Follow my path, because I will be with you and within you. And Saul, who had become Paul, says, as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection until he comes on the day of the Lord, until he comes again. This is our life. This is the reason.
for our hope. This is the basis. This is the focus. And this is the way, the path of hope. Will the servers please come forward?
Let's pray together. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that you have made a way for us to you. Every mountain has been made low, every valley filled in, and Jesus is our way. And we ask, Lord, that we would take his life in us this week, that where we are filled with little and great hopes, maybe for healing in our bodies or in our relationships, or financially, or in all the capitals, uh, that you long for us to be complete and whole and flourishing in the good life of Jesus, Lord. We ask, come Jesus, be in charge, guide us, help be for us the basis of our hope. Help us count on you when things get dark as well as when things are joyful and light. Be the person, Lord, we go to in good and bad times. Be the one for us that, uh, Lord, is our focus when we could be so easily distracted by other things in our lives. Yes, Lord, let us thank you for them, but let us know that our greatest hope is to be with you and enjoy and share your love with you and all those who belong to you. And that our greatest hope is the extension of your kingdom, the focus of your son Jesus in his life on earth. We ask, Lord, that you would open up us up to the power of your spirit to overcome our fears, for whatever blocks us from being willing to share the, our hope within us, be willing to comfort those who need comforting who need to be built up because of the brokenness that we all experience. And because of that brokenness, Lord, we come to you and we lift up names that need your healing touch, that need your encouragement, that need to be uh, rebuilt. We lift them up to you out loud now. And all the unspoken names, including ours, Lord, we we lift up in this prayer. And we ask you, Lord, to fill us to overflowing uh, with a sure and certain anticipation of pleasure in your presence. That one day we will see your face and your smile will shine and illuminate us all as we enjoy the fulfillment of your kingdom forever. And in the meantime, Lord, give us vision, give us courage, help us to chip away at your kingdom, help us be people of that kingdom in our conversations, in our meals, in in the way we notice people around us and extend your hand of grace Help us be uh, followers on your way, Lord. Help us to be the part that is lit up as just like the dawn hits the top of the mountain. Help us be on that path and reflect your grace and your love. Help us extend in all the darkest places, Lord. May your children rise up in places like Gaza and Israel in places like Ukraine, in all those places where your children suffer in darkness, Lord, we ask, give us strength to rise up and represent your kingdom, your justice, your mercy, and your grace. Especially be with those who are in despair right now, Lord. Even those who have so much life ahead but think their lives are over, 
We ask your protection against those, especially our young ones, who would succumb to darkness and violence and, and think life is over. Lord, give them encouragement. Help us be the people who spread out and share and encourage one another and build each other up and be a reflection of your hope, of your light, of your kingdom. And we pray for it, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. for our offering. Thank you, Lord, for this generous body of Christ that we give back just a portion of what you have blessed us with ongoing, day by day, month by month, year by year. Thank you, Lord, for these many blessings and let us be a reflection of the light and the hope that you shower on us. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. It doesn't matter how, how much time we have. We could, we could hit that bus tomorrow. We could live to be 120. But the thing is, we, we can be lighthearted. Even, even as our bodies are, are breaking down, we can be lighthearted because, no, we can, we can be winsome and joyful because we anticipate, we anticipate the pleasure of seeing Jesus face to face. And we will all be together. So let's work toward it in the meantime. Amen. And now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we can ask or even imagine it according to the power at work within us. To God be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus both now and forevermore. Amen. Right? Okay, well... Uh, let me do another one. Lord God, we thank you for gathering us. Uh, and we ask, thank you, Lord, for those who have stepped up to lead your people. We appreciate them and their gifts. And we are truly blessed, uh, Lord. So lead us in the right path, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Uh,